So welcome again to our second session of today's round of topics and discussions and panels. Uh, we are now discussing the preparation of the industry in Germany um, with respect to the current industry treaty, which came into force on uh, 1st of July 2021. I have still my esteemed speakers, Joanna Popovich Kanaki from Masterpiece, Joe Samara Smith, BD Gaming, and Luca Andrich, Managing Director of the German Sports Betting Association, with me. And since we learned that there was a time where regulation environment was just uncertainty, but almost no restrictions for the industry, it's now completely different. There is legal certainty, but a lot of restrictions. And ahead of this, the industry transformed. There was this transitional regime where some operators offering casino games are now trying to comply with the adopted requirements of the new industry treaty, which will now be the applicable requirements. Others didn't. So there's a black market and a white market, no longer a gray market. Uh, I like to discuss how your companies or whoever uh, you're connected to uh, are preparing for this situation. It's a difficult forecast in an environment full of competitive disadvantages. Uh, this compliance under the transitional regime to get a certain feeling on how it works, realizing you're losing customers, a lot of customers to those who didn't comply. And then a new gambling authority, which is supposed to centralize, but starts from scratch. And licensing procedures pending, ongoing, and starting. So Joe, maybe again, your first view, could you just give a comment on the difficulty of setting up a slots business, which is what you're going to do, with so little clear guidance on the rules? And was it almost being impossible to advertise? Because we need to, 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 to consider the transitional regime does not formally legalize the offerings. It's factually toleration. And advertising for illegal games of chance, meaning for non-licensed games of chance, is still prohibited. This will only be possible upon granting of a license, whenever this may be. So I'm, I'm keen to learn what you say. It's, it's a difficult environment. And, it, and actually, if you look at the regulatory regime, if, if in the abstract, if there had been no grey market or pre-regulated market, and the German consumers didn't really know what a good offering looked like, it'd be much easier. But the re reality is that there's been 15 years of the German customers playing online with, with slot sites that offer a very good return to player and very good bonuses. And if you now have a regulated site and you stick to all the rules, which you have to, otherwise you lose your license or you don't get granted your license, then, then your offering is going to be much worse than the black market. And so the question for, for us is really, first of all, is the black market going to be cracked down on at all? And at the moment, there doesn't seem to be any sign at all of anybody suggesting that they will go after the black market. And we know that there are some very, very big black market operators who are making 20 million euros a month EBITDA. And, you know, so the gross gaming revenue must be somewhere around 70 million. And they've just said, well, we're going to run it out of a Curacao license. There doesn't seem to be any crackdown on financial processing or anything like that. So when we launch into the market, we will have, uh, we will have less content. It will be on a lower, far lower RTP to the players. We won't be able to do any bonuses. It's going to be very difficult to find any of the customers um, because we can only advertise online for very, very limited times of day. We can't do any radio. We can't do any TV. Uh, we, you know, it's basically trying to find customers. It's going to be very, very tricky. You, you know, we will do search engine optimizer. We'll do what we can, but it really is like having both hands tied behind our backs and our legs tied together as well. And that's that's just not a very satisfactory position for trying to enter a market. So, and also our financial models at the moment. Uh, <laughs> we're trying to refine them, but there was one point when our original financial model basically showed that the bigger we got, the more money we lost, uh, which is really not a great situation to be in. So, you know, we we have to enter the market, but it will be a a slow, steady, 
establish yourself, establish a bit of a brand and hope that the tax rates and that the regulations change because and and that there's more crackdown on the black market because otherwise it's it's you know it's probably the, the worst possible market in Europe. I mean even worse than the French market. A little on the challenges you have on the, tech, on the technical side, all the, the platforms and the game software needs to be adjusted to the, the German uh, requirements and including the change of RTP, which will be done adjusted to a lower amount. That takes time. So the availability of uh, games is not really as it should be, right? Well, if you look at who's who's produced games, so Novomatic have done a lot of games, but they've said that they're going to use them exclusively, so it's not available to the general market. Red Tiger have put out uh, some, I think, about 30 games with the, the sort of lower RTPs. Microgaming has about eight. Uh, Edict and Blueprint will have some shortly, uh, but pretty much every other offering. You know, the book, book of are the dominant slots in Germany, And they do not work at a lower RTP or they work. The player experience is much, much worse. And so it's just, you know, there's going to be probably 10% of the content that was there, maybe less. It's just, it's, it's, it's unsatisfactory for customers and it, it drives them to the black market. If they've, if they've had an experience with, uh, you know, with a, a, a pre-regulated operator, I wouldn't be. I would be very surprised if they don't just seek out somebody who can who could provide exactly the same sort of experience, and it, and they don't. They won't really mind if they if the if those operators who are running out of Curacao still pay them. That's all they really care about. Nevertheless, the industry is preparing for a licensing regime and applying for licenses, hoping that the environment, the regulatory environment, will be improved. If you try to get answers. To so many questions, if you read the minimum requirements just published by the regulator, uh, it's not hard to get immediate responses due to the fact that the, the capacity of the new authority is very limited at the moment. Look how, what is your advice? Which, which could, who could operators contact if they need answers, if they need advice for the entry into the German market? Well, I mean, you know, apart from, I guess, talking to your lawyers and, and trade associations uh, like us, um, I guess the best uh, piece of advice is try to, to seek direct contact with the regulatory authorities. Unfortunately, it is not um, very straightforward at the moment because... Um, so you've got divided responsibilities, say for sports betting, you, you have, um, uh, you know, the Regierungspräsidium in Darmstadt, which is responsible, but if you are applying for um, an online casino uh, slash online poker license, um, you have to um, apply in Saxony-Anhalt. Having said that, this new regulatory authority that we're talking about has been set up, but it's not actually in charge of the process because it's only got a handful of staff. Um, so there's a separate authority in Sachsen anhalt the so-called Landesverwaltungsamt. They have set up uh, specific email addresses and we've, we've encouraged them to put an FAQ section on their website. We as a trade association, we're also trying to channel questions that our members have to, to this authority and, and kind of getting feedback. But the best advice would be to um, you know, get in touch with, with the responsible authority directly and, um, you know, if, if in doubt, um, you know, as I said, talk to your lawyers and, and we, we as a trade association, we also provide a forum where operators applying for these licenses can um, talk about their, their experiences and interpretations of, of uh, legal um, rules. Right, I can say my, my first experience when I tried to get someone on the phone and I reached out to someone, they're really open-minded and tried to assist. But of course, there are so many contradictive regulations in the interstate treaty, so many so many left open questions. And then we have two regulators, two technical infrastructures, safe service systems. Uh, it's hard to find your way through. And I think we simply need some time. What we need is to offer this sort of dialogue the one I mentioned uh, earlier in, in our first session. I think this is really key to get this done. Um, would you like to add Maybe something? Maybe just to add one. Say again, please. So just 
w- one thing that 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 has occurred to us over the past couple of days that not even the authorities in the different lenders seem to know exactly what the other land is doing. I mean, we we've we've seen examples where you know uh, Darmstadt was asking for certain contracts that were supposed to be issued by Saxony Anhalt, and these contracts uh, didn't exist yet. So so there seems to be a uh, lack of communication between the authorities, and I think I mean that's that's. Um, you know, we're now, um, you know, two weeks into the process and we hope that that will improve uh, quickly. But um, uh, what we've also seen in the past is that the authorities tend to be um, lenient if and when certain obligations cannot uh, be fulfilled uh, and, and their extensions to deadlines and so on. If you can reasonably show that what they've been asking for is is uh, impossible or, or very difficult to um, uh, to reach within also within the short time frames that they they've set up. Yeah, probably it's interesting to to learn from an, an, a real life example. You wanna you're going to launch your product and uh, you are really analyzing regulation uh, and you set your goals very high. This will be a big one, of course. Tell us how you plan to launch your own brand or how you plan to launch your new brand. Absolutely, Jörg. I mean, the goals have to be high, right? Because because you shoot for the moon and even if you miss it, you land among the stars. But um, um, I slightly have to disappoint you because, uh, you know, launching a new brand in, in, in the German market, even in these complex times, doesn't really differ that much from, from launching a brand in, in any other regulated market, except for, for the fact that I mentioned it's, you need to be prepared for this complexity. You need to be prepared for all of these obstacles and, and regulation and, and compliance it brings uh, uh, with it. But um, other than that, I'm, I'm more than happy to share um, a portion of the, of the recipe for, for launching a, a new and uh, successful brand. So, um, in my opinion, there are a few ingredients worth mentioning. So, uh, it all starts with the brand name. So, it, it needs to be very close to the audience that you have chosen to be your target one. The name has to be catchy and it really needs to fit the market. I strongly believe that we have fulfilled this mission with excellence uh, in, in our brand, Jack One. And um, after that, it all comes to, to the visuals. So the visuals have to be you know, eye-catchy, eye-candy, and, and also bring up the appropriate emotions uh, within the audience. Um, last but not the least uh, is, the, is the tonality. The tonality that you use um, is uh, very important when communicating especially your values to the broader public because public needs to relate to the values so they can relate to the brand itself. And um, this, this three ingredients sort of make up a brand identity. And um, it, it is, in my opinion, what differs you more than anything else that is out there because eventually operators are going to end with a set of more or less the same features at the end of the day. So you really need something to, to, to stand out with and, and that is the brand identity. Um, maybe one, one, uh, uh, one thing to mention um, that um, uh, localization is not to be neglected. So um, we at Masterpiece Gaming, for example, chose in the past of sponsoring not big names, but sponsoring fourth, uh, fourth league clubs in Germany. And, and with that, really get close to the, to the player, to the, to the fan, to the one who gives their heart and soul for their you know, local club. And um, there are, of course, many, many other um, uh, ingredients that come into the mix, but as, as anything in, in, in life, you know, it has to be balanced, well-balanced. And uh, um, you have to, you don't have to be, you shouldn't be afraid of, you know, uh, testing things, experimenting, and knowing your numbers is, is, is what matters at the end of the day, because knowing that, then it allows you to... to to bring that, you know, perfect golden kind of mix uh, um, that brings you to, to the stars, if not to the moon. Excellent. This was a brilliant tutorial. Thank you very much. 
for <laughs> sharing those valuable insights with us. Um, Joe, now we know how it works, but what is the perfect timing for a product launch in Germany for virtual slot machines and probably online poker as well? Um, I think it's really tricky because most of the people who are there, there aren't actually a huge number of new brands launching. Most people were pre were in the pre-regulated market and have just changed their product to reflect that and already have a customer base. Um, I, you know, I would, I would obviously always rather be live. I would like to have been live on the first of July, but we just didn't have enough information to. In fact, we we're not even certain we could legally operate. We, you know, if you're a slots only offering, Joanna can be in the market because she's sports betting, but I can't. I can't actually work out whether we are actually allowed to be live with a slots only offering, and nobody can tell me. Um, <laughs> So, and if you're a poker only offering, I'm, I, I think you've got the same problem. And it depends, you know, it's interesting to hear Luca say that the regulators are being pragmatic about it. But if you're, you know, if you're part of a big company, they like certainty. So you, you, you know, it, it's, it's, hard for, it's hard for big companies to say, okay, we'll take the risk, uh, particularly when it's their home market. Um, I, you know, I, w I would hope that there will be a sensible move towards relaxing some of some of the restrictions on things like affiliates, uh, on on some of the gambling advertising, the timing. I think they've I think they've got the right intentions. I just I just think the way they're doing it is not it's not very sensible. Um, but I suspect that in three years' time, it will be much easier to launch a new brand into the market than it is now. That's an excellent conclusion, and this uh, helps me to move to our next and final session uh, of today's round of sessions when we look into the future and see what can be and what needs to be improved. So see you very shortly, and again, please stay tuned.